Thank you, and welcome to another episode. This is at the ACCE Learning Network, but it's deal. It's a DLT conference and Digicon at the Fringe. Now we've got some wonderful guests with us here today, and a family, a fa Ooh, yeah, a uh, father and son. And just in case you're confused, uh, kind and the father. Uh, <laughs> And, so and we also have his uh, son, is it Kalani? Yes. Great. And they've just finished a session where they were looking at um, creativity, innovation, and um, there's so many things. You've been a guest before on our show once before talking about your yeah, musical yeah, background. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, today we were kind of, oh, we did two sessions. The first session we talked about a Minecraft project that the two of us were involved with back when I was a teacher in a school and Kalani was a grade six student. Uh, and it was kind of an interesting project that we've worked on together. And in the second session, which we just finished now, we're talking about like um, uh, the internet, sort of networked learning, learning from the network, uh, connectivity. connectivity, all those kind of kind of concepts. Something that Celia actually spoke about in her, in her keynote, you know, uh, we're not individuals, we're all part of one. What yep. is knowledge? Is knowledge something that sits in the individual or is it sort of sit within the network and how, how does it arise from the network, et cetera? And then Kalani gives a couple of, gave a couple of really good examples about how he's built a, built a couple of project, projects himself. One's like a magic company that he's built. It's a really interesting story. A magic story. company? Yeah. yeah. True story. Can I tell that? That's awesome. uh, so it basically started with us moving into the city where we, um, we did that. I, I walked around the city most afternoons by myself, tried the CBD, and I found like these awesome like street magicians on, on Swanson Street. They were just like all together doing that thing busking, showing people tricks, and I said, I want to be like them. Yeah. That's what I want to do with my life. So um, I went, it I went like back home. It was like magic. Yeah, it was <laughs> like magic. It was a little magic moment for me. <laughs> and um, I went back, I went to YouTube, I went to book, I, just, I went everywhere just to find like these little, I had like, all I had back then was like, a pack of cards, like a cheap pack of cards from Target. And I basically taught myself a bunch of tricks, like a wow. bunch of, like, you know, they're your basic tricks, but I took them back to those magicians and they fixed them up and they made them good. They showed me how to present them, took them to school. Suddenly I'm a school magician. And even from there, then my friend, my friend actually came up to me and he said, um, I want to be like you. Suddenly my role had reversed Aww. and I was the street magician. And that's wonderful. That's when that magic moment happened. <laughs> me. And I taught him, we became like a, a little duo act where I taught him and then he started learning stuff. We taught each other. Then we eventually actually went back onto the streets and started busking ourselves. And we, we formed a little company, got Facebook and Instagram, and then just we kept going and going until eventually people actually started hiring us for parties. Hey, just wind back there. You formed a company <laughs> and you Instagram? But that's very new. I don't think many magicians would be thinking about um, setting up an Instagram promotion and social media presence for their company. Well, well, we started obviously with the Facebook page because that was the obvious idea. But, that's um, what all these old school things yeah. do. Yeah. You know, that's that's how we thought we'd have to get, yeah. reach out to the old schools. Yeah. They, were, they were the ones with the money who were going to hire us. So. Yeah, so, totally. And the rabbits yeah. in the pockets. <laughs> yeah. But um, then we thought, because we're, we we're actually posting a lot of our tricks to the Facebook page, like yep. footage of our tricks, and we thought, the best way to do that was actually Instagram because you can post like a little 15 second video or a picture. So yeah. we're like, we start up this Instagram page. We're posting like quick 50 second tricks of just, here's a card, there's a card, gone, here's a card again. Something well, obviously looks better in person. but like <laughs> Without um, an yeah. imaginary card. Yeah, with yeah. real cards. Real like cards, but, um, awesome. So yeah, we actually just started posting that. And the Instagram actually got more, we, we started posting more to the Instagram than we did to the Facebook. Obviously the Facebook was how people got in touch with us for our parties, but um, Instagram, Instagram just became where, where we just had fun and started, you know, where Maybe. people just started looking at us, not for what we're doing, but for our cool tricks and stuff. Yeah. Mm. So what do you think that means for your digital identity and reputation? Were you scared about putting yourself out there on the interwebs? Not really, because I've done it before. <laughs> like, obviously I was, at this generation, everyone's already all over the interwebs, so uh, it was nothing new to me, it was just, now I own two Facebook pages as opposed to one, which became, it was it was actually quite interesting because I was I actually instead of being scared about it, I was more excited about it because it was less about posting uh, what I had for breakfast this morning, more about posting <laughs> green smoothies. That, hey, those green smoothies, don't judge. Selfie. They, <laughs> selfie with the kids. Um, so it eventually became more about actually posting what we're what we're going to be doing in terms of like hey hey everybody. 
we're busking on this street at this time tomorrow, come say hi and stuff. So it became more about like something more interesting yeah. for me personally anyway. That being said, great smoothies. <laughs> no, nothing against them. Now you also mentioned Minecraft before. Um, I take it you're both Minecraft players and... <laughs> um, what? Well, we, 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 back when we were at school together, I was teaching, he was a kid, I was a student. Um, we, well, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was a teacher. It's a lot. It's a lot. Now you're a great Now I understand. And you taught him everything you know about Minecraft. Teacher, there's no student so teacher and co learner. Student co learner. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, we, we ran a Minecraft project where basically it was a sustainability project. So we, we taught, taught the idea of sustainability. And the premise was our world has exploded or blown up because of unsustainable practices. But fortunately, we discovered this brand new planet and we're all going to fly there. So. Surprise. And we're going to build a new planet based on your learning about sustainability. So we put 150 odd kids, all the grade five six kids, into wow. this Minecraft server, and for a term, so for 10 weeks, they basically lived in this this planet, and uh, they built and built and built. And uh, so they had the Minecraft server, plus they had a wiki where a lot of their knowledge was kind of going through. So they um, they they self organised, they broke themselves up into districts, uh, and on the wiki is where they were posting all their their learning and their research. And uh, they would debate what should be built next, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, they would very much actually even take it out of like both the surf, the Minecraft and the wiki in the sense that they would actually go back to their own homes and stuff and start researching, like because it was on sustainability. They would start researching like good sustainable ways of what what's good energy and what's um, good to build and how to build it. Then they would obviously take that back into the Minecraft and stuff. Yeah. So, so it wasn't much, just about yeah. like playing a game, isn't that what Minecraft is? That it, Minecraft is a game, yes, but um, we used it more as well. We actually did use it as a game, you could say, yeah, but, um, as a game, and also it was evidence like, of learning. It was a all. learning tool. Cause... Games can have learning. No, <laughs> I totally believe that. I'm just You're leading to that. <laughs> <laughs> when you're working in that environment, but by the way, I love the apocalyptic mission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great, wasn't it? Like, mind you, based on the zombie apocalypse coming in there. Yeah, yeah, sort yeah. Of, yeah. Actually, yeah. a lot of the students I'm teaching at the moment, when I said, what are your experiences with computer science and digital stuff? And I had some students say, I like using Minecraft, but I just blow stuff up. That's what I like to do. Which I'm like, some, yeah. of our, some of the students actually did. We had it's, a real, it's a real lesson, about actually, about yeah. briefing. And about yeah, actually, yeah, and then, that's and You've got that where the group negotiates the rules about what That's we don't right. touch, we do touch. And that actually touches a little bit on where you're, one of your interests, which is about, say, network learning. Uh, oh, absolutely. So, like, that, 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 that's what we're trying to apply in this situation of the national, what is a network, how does a network actually uh, work where it's generating kind of new knowledge. That there's certain kind of criteria that sort of you have to apply to it, which is one of them is remove the hierarchical controls, make the network open, those kind of ideas. And that's what we're trying to apply into this. So who are the hierarchical controllers? content the teachers get rid of them and see what happens and so and but you're right like when, when we started it was complete ad hoc chaos in this minecraft world like kids are building over each other they were briefing each other oh, and then up. they come yeah. to us and say how do we solve this and the first thing that you want to do is go okay here's the rules yep. so what we tried to do is go you're the you're the system you are the network is the children sort of that themselves sort of that was, that, was that difficult it was, or is that um, a natural kind of way of being no, no, it's not. It's, it's very unnatural because the discourse that we exist in, which is the education yes. discourse, has a hierarchical power. control of the power yeah. system built into it, which is teacher, student, principal, teacher, student, uh, department, principal, teacher, student, curriculum. Parents. Yeah, <laughs> and it all goes that way. Yeah. So it, it was quite difficult. I mean, we've done like maybe three or four years of working in the school to try and help them understand some of these concepts and work in this environment. But yeah. for certain teachers, it was still a very difficult experience. Yeah. Do not go, here's how you're going to do it. But uh, we got through it and, and we allowed the system to kind of, you know, come up with its own, its own set of rules and its own reason for existence. And it was a perfect day something that the kids did, essentially. Like, amazing. amazing so stuff. do you think the kids are quite resilient to being able to work like that online? No, or... they went with it. Really? They, yeah. They very, much, they very much got in and started, they, like, they formed their own sort of, as Dad said, system and politics. Yeah, yeah. They very yeah. much they were, I wouldn't necessarily say in control, but in the sort of, I guess, harmony where they were all sort of working together. And it eventually it evolved into like a, it was, as we said earlier, it was just blowing each other up. And <laughs> yeah, at the very beginning when we just chucked them all in. It sounds yeah. like Lord of the Flies. It, um, yeah, it was an example. But, they, but at the end, they did sort of like self-teach. And, and then there was a quiet role of teacher to act 
and just manage. gently manage, can suggest and guide. Manage, and suggest and guide and get out of the way, yeah. yeah. And then, I mean, one of the great stories that came out of it was essentially like, okay, they wanted to learn about energy, like, you know, because mm -hmm. that's, you know, sort of, we need a new energy. So, like, naturally they all went to wind farms because that seemed like what sustainability is all about. Except there's one little kid, and it sounds like a cliche, but he's a Russian kid. He's got Russian scientist parents. He came in and said, we're not going to wind farms, we're going nuclear. Good right? grief. Yeah, good grief. So suddenly, yeah. like, nobody, none of the teachers know anything about nuclear energy. Like, you know, I don't know the teachers. So he was like, I want to build a nuclear power plant. And, and we said, if you can convince everyone that's the way we should go, we'll do it. So, with redstone and pistons. Yeah, so and he actually had the legitimate, he wasn't just like, I want to build a building and call it nuclear. No, he, he actually had the um, yeah. science behind it. Yeah. But he and was like, research and the research and parents. parents. Yeah. And the real science. Mm -hmm. Yeah, research and parents came in, we'd run sessions on what nuclear energy was. Yeah. Put it on the wiki. He was teaching everyone essentially the science. I was a 12 year old age. kid and I was interested in learning about nuclear physics, which was yeah. mind blowing for me. So I was in Lindy McEwen's uh, space and I was putting water tanks in all the QUT buildings. I thought, how could you not have water tanks in a virtual space and yeah, being able yeah. to save all that virtual rainwater? Yeah. Absolutely. Good point. Yeah. So that's an example of, of basically like student led learning, like, yeah. you know, where you're allowing the system to kind of self teach and it's going much further than what we would have. If we were sort of dominating, it was like, here's what we're going to teach the kids, bang, bang, bang. Yeah. You're going to open it up and the kids can kind of, you're allowing the network to teach itself. It they, goes to, they teach each other. They teach each other, they teach us. It goes to far more interesting places. That's fascinating. Yeah, it's totally fascinating. Do you reckon the teachers do enough of that experimental stuff or it's just, just a bit too edgy because if the kids are enjoying it, it doesn't, well, fun can't be learning. Yes, it can. Um, at this stage, I'd say no, they're not doing enough of it. Okay. High school, you're you know, definitely not in high school. Uh, in primary school, actually, I'd say there is a lot of is it going yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. In primary school, because uh, obviously at, at these conferences, most of them are primary school, and I'm finding that a lot of them are trying out these new sort of things, new sort of like systems, because they, they can, they, the students are younger, but like in, um, in high school, because I'm, I'm a year nine student, and it's just, it's not really. I've had a, I had a theory that, um, Primary teachers are used to the idea of blended yeah, learning and being able to yeah. mash together yeah. some things. Um, secondary teachers often the scope of what we do is narrowed to a particular curriculum area. Yeah. Because um, I think it's that this is a more important time where we have to drill in. Because obviously with BCA yeah. coming coming up, they have to you have to get all this information into. You, whereas primary school, it's more about just there's no there's nothing building up to like a big exam a, end of year exam. It's just yeah. sort of like and that's sad actually, wasn't it? The yeah. exam actually drives Controls the learning. Else, which, which shouldn't. Why not? Well, if the learning is about, the, le the learning is about the exam. So the exam is to show that the, the learning, but like, if the exam, if the exam the controls the learning, yeah. in the sense that then you just start learning basic st structures, of, which are not only aren't interesting, aren't helpful. <laughs> it's funny you should say that, because I challenged a student once who said, yes, but the grand final is what drives whole of the footy season and yeah, he thought right. about it overnight and came back and said no if it was we'd only have the grand final so the reality is that? yep yeah, the reality right. is every other day is you important so i can buy game. my meat pie hang out with dad and go to the footy yeah, and true. shout my lungs off he said that's what's important it's yeah. not the grand final it's, it's there but you know yeah. That's yeah. and it's yeah and he was right um i lost <laughs> <laughs> So you, do you think you can have these really rich, immersive, interconnected, multiple subject mashup experiences and still do well on the exams? Uh, well, in honest opinion, I say no because the exams are themselves are very structured around. And I'm not saying that it's bad. I'm, I'm saying, well, I would say the exams are bad in the sense that they are very, they're too structured, too focused on like the basics. So. Imagine 10 years in the future, okay. Uh, you move, okay? Okay, you become a senior lecturer at the Magical Music Museum or university we've set up, yes. Swinburne maybe. Uh, and Get on that. Let's take the trees, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, technology yeah. itself becomes so mysterious, it's almost magic. And um, it's almost there already. Well, almost there. Almost there. So what do you see happening then in schools? What would be on the splashed across the the newspaper, the headline is? Technology. Is it just technology? Uh, no, actually, no, actually, that was a bad example. Let me rephrase it. I'd okay. say, Ooh, yeah. um, rewrite. Um, I'd say <laughs> yeah. the headlines would be more of 
I don't know what they'd be, but I'd say they more would be about this, what they should be is more about the student and not the learning. Okay. Wow. So that's an interesting way of thinking of that. I know, and I've got yeah. you all thinking now, but yeah. Say, yeah. what schools are not, and I'm sorry, cutting off there, no, what okay. schools yeah. should be and what they're not. Schools are focused on the learning and the teaching and the course, but what they're not really focused on at the moment is the student in general. I'm so sure they're focused on your the Your newspaper headline is would be, look at what our students made. Look at what our students built. Look, look at what, what our, students our students can do. Are. Look at who our yeah, students, who look look at students, students are. are. Look at yeah. who they are. These, yeah. these are our students. Hashtag as opposed students to, are this is our school. This is, what we usually are is this is our school. We teach. We're an innovative school because we Come teach this, school, this, and this. But you, don't, you never hear about, okay, who are your students? What are they doing? And I'm sure you can say, like, some of our students have gone on to do this. But it's like, just your general student. How are they learning? How are they getting on? Okay. How are they with so their lives? If, it, if in like 10, 15 years, you're a teacher in a school, if we'll schools see. still exist and teachers are still a defined role within that system, unless there's a revolution, um, what kind of things would you do in your everyday stuff? That I would, as if I was a teacher, I would very much, I would obviously, um, I wouldn't necessarily stick to the I would obviously not stick to the basics, but I would um, I very much be focused on, like I said, my students and my class. I talk about how they want to learn, what they want to learn. Do they want to? Do they just want to research everything and mm -hmm. computers and make powerpoints? Do they? Is that how they? I hope use? powerpoint is not a main I hope thing. Not. But I really they, hope. Oh, yeah. but like I'm saying, is that really what they want to do? Because yep. obviously that's what we're currently doing. But if, and if they want to keep doing that, that's fine by them. But what if if they want to actually start maybe making uh, movies or Podcasts. <laughs> yeah, podcasts are a great idea, by the way. Um, or if they want, if I want, I would focus on what they want to do. In like, let's say I'm a maths teacher. Obviously, I wouldn't be because I'm terrible at maths. But I'd say I would throw out my textbook and I'd say, "All right, here's how we're gonna learn. Your you guys are gonna find the maths in, in everyday life and do that, as opposed to find the maths in a textbook, which I." struggling to find an everyday life. Kind of, this is a scary world where yeah. students are actually <laughs> having a choice really in their that. curriculum. But also the idea that um, they have an authentic voice that we need to listen to. And is that a takeaway that we should be thinking about? Oh uh, yeah, it's pretty interesting what you say. You know, yeah. like, I haven't heard that come it's out of the yeah. yeah. And if he's picking it up from the conference, Gold. awesome. And if it's something he's picked up from uh, being a kid here. in the school, and speak yeah. being yeah. a kid in the school, speaking from his heart. Yeah, yeah, I mean, an authentic voice, absolutely goes back to that notion we touched on before, like there is no such a thing as a student or a teacher, there's only co-learners who listen to the whole lot of us. Like, you know, that's what I really believe in. I believe in the social, I don't believe in the individual, I believe in the collective. That's what I love about it. Technology is essentially the collective, the network. Yeah. Talk about that at the start. I think that's where all the kind of power is. Yeah. It's all in the relationships. It's not the technology, it's the interconnection. It's, it's the connections, yeah. it's in the relationships. That's where the power and that's where the beauty is. And I guess that's what you're sort of talking about, like, Maybe we've forgotten that too. It's in the relations. Who are these kids? You know, giving them that voice and actually, what do you want to learn? That's, that was really interesting. Well, it's wonderful yeah. hearing a message. And for me, the engagement is that um, students today are very creative. They've got the tools if you let them use it and using it in a group, um, like Minecraft, being able to build, construct, and then build a wiki. And then I think the message you've shared with me is actually set that inspiring goal. and. Give them that scaffolding, but then back off and just let them begin to develop the kind trust. of yeah trust. Yeah, but is there, there's a point when you need to pull back on the scaffolding a bit and then be there as a guide on the side and maybe giving a tap on the steering wheel to keep them in the right direction. It's about finding those magic moments or helping students find them for themselves. Oh, it's quite it, your metaphor. It is very yeah. much about helping them find their own magic moments, but still they have to find it. Yeah. I get mine when I finish writing my reports, but nothing happens, <laughs> nothing happens after that. Yeah, very private. And <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. It's been wonderful talking yeah, about. Really now, I have a favour to ask you both, if we can. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Okay. Um, I've got some uh, weapons and tools this is here. This the props thing again. So you get the banana. Here we go. Hey, Amanda. I think you you really like Doctor Who. You should have to have a Doctor Who. Oh, movie. okay. I'll take yeah. it. You can have oh. Matt Smith I as well. I thought we were talking about Doctor Who. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, Doctor Who quote. Quote has a call. I knew you'd go with that. <laughs> All right.
Okay, ready? Photos are cool. Photos. Purely because we said it earlier today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and if you hadn't noticed, <laughs> point the check out yeah. Roland's got a TARDIS tie on yes, today. Yes, I'm, I'm very disappointed. I left my, I have a Doctor Who bow tie in my bag over there. Oh, I need to bring, I'm bringing my fez tomorrow, so yeah. fez is a cool. I will be sure to wear my, my bow tie. Okay. Um. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>